Hello students, in this video we'll prove that a second order differential equation has a power series expansion in an interval around an ordinary point. Let's consider the ODE, y double prime plus p of x, y prime plus q of x, y equals zero. And let's assume that p and q are analytic functions, where p and q are analytic functions, which means that p and q have power series. In a neighborhood of the origin. What we're going to do this in the neighborhood of the origin. You can shift this to any point you want, any ordinary point. Our analytic at x equals 0. Then y, the solution, is analytic at 0 as well. Okay, this is a, sort of a tinker toy version of what's known as a regularization result. If I, if, I was, if I a priori have a second order continuous differentiable function that satisfies this, I can actually construct a power series expansion for y, right? And so here's the idea, so what we're gonna do is this, and so the proof of this fact goes as follows, right? So the proof is that we're gonna let p of x has a representation like this, n goes from zero to infinity of some coefficients, I'll call them pn, x to the n, and this representation is valid in some interval around the origin, so less than a number r capital of p. And then similarly for q, right? So q of x has this representation, the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of qn x to the n, where x is less than r q, right? And so we know by, ta by the Taylor expansion that what I can do from this is the following. I can say that for any r, there is an r that's less than these numbers over here, then these coefficients pn are less than or equal to a number m capital over r sub little p to the power n, where r sub p is a number, r sub p is strictly less than a number r capital of p, and likewise for q, right? So qn is less than or equal to mq over r q n, where r q is less than r capital Q, right? In other words, if I give you a radius of convergence, I know that the coefficients of that Taylor expansion have to be bounded by an exponential decay for any parameter that's strictly less than that radius of convergence over here, okay? And so now what we're gonna do is our sort of natural candidate for a radius of convergence, we're going to set our R value, which we're gonna say is the solute is gonna be the rate, is gonna be one candidate for the radius of convergence of R, just to be the minimum of R P and R Q, okay? And then for, for my constant over here, I'm going to let m be the maximum of these three quantities, of the quantities mp, mq. Uh, I want probably provide like an a1, I'll tell you what a1r is in a second, a1r, r, and then 1 for context, where we write y in this form over here, the sum n goes from zero to infinity of a n x to the n. I'm going to consider this, well, I'm going to consider this power series over here with these coefficients, and I'm going to try to show that these coefficients, this, this series will actually converge to a solution to the differential equation. So this power series over here, so this will solve, y solves the ODE, if and only if what. So now you'd have to plug these, these coefficients in and see what happens over here. So let's look at what's, what's going to happen. What's going to happen is that we're going to have um, the following. We're going to have the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of a n n n minus 1. And then what? And then, and then we will have um, an x to the n minus 2. That's my y double prime term. And then we'll have what? We're going to have the Cauchy product of the p's and the y primes, right? So what's that going to look like? That's going to be the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity. Now I'm going to use the Cauchy theorem. The sum, k goes from 0 up to n. And then what we have over here, we're going to have k, a, n, so I have a k, a, k. And then we'll have a, the coefficients of p, so that's going to be a p, n minus k. Those are the, co the Cauchy product of my coefficients over here. And then this will be an x to the n, x to the n minus 1, because I have a derivative over there. Okay, excellent. And then the next terms in the Cauchy expansion are going to be what? Are going to be the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity. Then the Cauchy product terms over here, k goes from 0 up to n of k, and then 
There's no K anymore, just an AK, right? Just an AK. Just an AK. And then what? And then I'll have a Q and K. Q and K. And those are the coefficients of x to the 2 n minus 1, x to the n minus 2, like that. Okay, excellent. And so now what we're going to do is, and this has to be equal to 0, right? So in other words, I just basically plug in all the power series, use the Cauchy products, and get this representation over here, right? And so now we're going to prove that these coefficients, so my goal now, so our goal is to show that these a n's are less than or equal to this number m over this number r to the power n, right? Well, by assumption, since a1 can be is just a fixed number, and m is bigger than this, right? m is bigger than m1r, I have that a1 is what? a1 is less than m over r. So this is true by choice of m if, m, if uh, n is equal to 1, right? So then we're going to do the rest by induction, right? So by induction, then we'll prove by induction. Now we're going to do induction. Okay? So now I can assume this is true for everything, for all values of for all values of m, for example, so we can say that all values of m, so m is true for m less than or equal to n minus 1, okay? And we're going to prove it's true for n, okay? So now what we're going to do, these terms are fine over here. These terms over here, I'm going to have to shift them, right? So here, let's do the shifting together. So if I shift this, I'm going to shift this down by 1. So I'm going to raise this power over here to an n minus 2. So I need to replace this n over here with a 1, right? So if n goes, I'm going to take this n and turn it into a 1, which means I have to subtract 1 over here. And I have to subtract 1 over where? Over here. So I'm going to get a minus 1 like that, OK? So I have to subtract 1 over there, and I account for all the n's over here. So if I add 1 on this index, I have to subtract 1 on all these indices over here. Great. I'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to change this to a what? To a 2. So I have to subtract 2 over here and then 2 over here, like that. OK? Excellent. And so now we have a relationship with the coefficients, because now what's happened over here is that this n's going to turn into a what? This n's going to turn into, um, and that's an n minus 2. This is just going to be a straight n, actually. So that's actually just a straight n, since I don't have a minus 2. So now it's going to be a minus 2. This is now going to turn into a minus 2, like that. And so now everything has been synced up to n minus 2. So our relationship now is that a n, a n, n times n minus 1, that's the coefficient over here, plus these terms over here, plus these terms over here, the sum k goes from 0 to n minus 1 of k a k p n minus k, p n minus k, plus the sum k goes from 0 to n minus 2 of a k, and then q n minus k minus 2 has to be equal to 0, right? So in other words, the a n is equal to the negative of this and the negative of this divided by n minus n minus 1 over 2. So in other words, the absolute value of a n is less than or equal to the reciprocal of this over here, n, n minus 1 inverse, reciprocal of that. Excellent. And then times the largest these two sums can be, right? So I'm going to put the absolute value inside the sums over here. Times the largest this sum can be, k goes from 0 up to n minus 1 of k, absolute value a k, absolute value of p n minus k minus 1, and then plus the sum, k goes from 0 up to n minus 2, absolute value a k, absolute value q, n minus k minus 2, right? Excellent. That's the bound on the a n's. And now notice that each of these values of k are less than n minus 2, so I can use the induction hypothesis that a of those values is less than m over r to the k, right? So let's look at, think what we have over here. So these terms over here are going to be a what? Are going to be an m over r to the k. These terms over here are going to be a what? Are going to be an are less than, or I can make these bigger by making this what? I know that mp is less than m, so I can replace that with an m over what? m over r to the what? m over r to the power of, and since the r is smaller, that's making the whole thing bigger, right? m over r to the power n minus k minus 1. And these terms over here are less than what? m over r to the k. And then these terms over here are going to be m over r to the n minus k minus 2, 
okay? Now, if I count these things, everything over here, look at this, this is an r to the k, r to the n minus k minus one, that is r to the r to the n minus one, and this is an r to the n minus two, and I have an m to the k, m, m to the k, m to the k plus one, m, right? So let's count all these terms and see what happens over here. So what we have over here is therefore, a n is less than or equal to one over n times n minus one, and then everything over here, I can make this bigger by making this an m to the n minus k, that makes that bigger, and I can make this bigger over here, so in other words, every single one of these terms over here, I can replace with an m over r to the power n, right? So I can pull out an m over r to the power n from each of those terms, that makes each of the individual sum ends bigger. And how many terms do we have over here? We have to, I have to sum k goes from zero to n minus one, to n minus one, well that's just an arithmetic sum over here, so that's k, if I sum k goes from one, because k goes there doesn't count, if I sum k goes from one up to n minus one, that's gonna mean n times n minus one over two. So the first thing we're gonna get over here is an n times n minus one over two. And then the next term is just how many terms simply do we have in the sum over here, well it'll be exactly just uh, n minus two, so n, n plus one uh, terms in the sum over here, so we're having n minus one terms in the sum, n minus one terms in the sum, the n minus one factor is gonna cancel from both those things, and so a n is less than or equal to one over n, and then m over r to the power n, and then what? And then I have an n over two plus, uh, plus a one, right? Now what's gonna happen over here? So now if I look at this thing, I've got one half plus one over n, so this is really just gonna be a, a one half plus one over n, so this is gonna be m over r, this is strictly less than m over r, less than or equal to m over r to the n, and then a one half plus one over n. So as long as n is bigger than or equal to two, that's less than one, so this is strictly less than m over r to the power n. If n is bigger than or equal to two, or and if it's equal to two, there's a strict inequality here just by virtue of the fact that m is strictly bigger than this. So I, there's a strict inequality at this point over here by re replacing these things with m over r. So this inequality actually over here is strict, so I get strict inequality if I wish, right? Now the whole point now is that I've just shown that a n is less than or equal to m over r to the n, which means that this, I can take this number over here to be my radius of convergence of the series over here represented by y. So y not only solves the differential equation, but by virtue of this inequality in the coefficients, I know that this power series will converge for any, for any radius less than m over r, and we've proven that there's an analytic solution to this differential equation provided the p and q are analytic functions, and this is our first example of a differential equation which, is a, which exhibits a regularization mechanism under the assumption the coefficients in the differential equation have some regularity themselves. Thank you very much.